Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about renal stone disease, also known as nephrolithiasis or kidney stones. This term refers to the formation of hard deposits in the kidneys or urinary tract. These stones can vary in size and composition and can cause significant pain and discomfort. In this video we will talk about the different types, the causes, risk factors, diagnosis, symptoms, treatment and complications. What are the types of renal stones? Renal stones can vary in composition and different types of stones have distinct characteristics and treatment considerations. The first type of stone is the calcium oxalate stones. These stones are the most common type of renal stones. They are radio-opaque, meaning they are visible on x-rays and CT scans. They can vary in size and shape. The next type is the calcium phosphate stones. These stones are also radio-opaque, so visible on x-ray, and they can be dense and appear as white spots on imaging studies. Another type is the struvite stones. They are also known as infection stones and are often composed of magnesium, ammonium and phosphate. They can grow rapidly and can be quite large. Struvite stones are also usually radio-opaque, so visible on x-ray. Another type is uric acid stones. Those stones are radiolucent meaning they are not visible on standard x-rays. They may not be detected unless specialized imaging techniques such as CT scans or ultrasound with color doppler are used. The last type is cysteine stones. Those stones are rare and are composed of the amino acid cysteine. They can be yellowish and have a smooth appearance. They are typically radio-opaque so visible on x-ray, and it can be challenging to treat them. What are causes of kidney stones? The cause of renal stone formation is often multifactorial, involving a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Having a family history of kidney stones increases the risk of developing them. Genetic factors can play a role in stone formation. Inadequate fluid intake and dehydration can concentrate the urine, making it easier for minerals and substances to crystalline and form stones. Certain dietary factors can contribute to the formation of kidney stones. Examples are high intake of oxalate-rich foods such as spinach, rhubarb, beets and nuts. Oxalate can bind with calcium in the urine leading to calcium oxalate stone formation. Being overweight or obese can also increase the risk of developing kidney stones. Obesity is associated with metabolic changes that can promote stone infection. Certain medical conditions, such as urinary tract infections, inflammatory bowel disease, and certain metabolic disorders, like hyperparathyroidism, can increase the risk of kidney stone formation. Structural abnormalities or blockages in the urinary tract, such as kidney cysts, kidney stones, or urethral strictures, can increase the risk of stone formation. Also, certain medication and supplements can increase the risk of kidney stone formation. These include diuretics, calcium based antacids, and certain antibiotics. Men are more prone to developing kidney stones than women. Additionally, the risk of kidney stones increases with age. How can we diagnose kidney stones? The diagnosis of renal stones typically involves a combination of medical history, physical examination and diagnostic tests. We will usually ask about the patient's symptoms, medical history, family history, and risk factors for kidney stones. We also perform a physical examination 
to assess for any signs of kidney stone related pain or tenderness. We can do different imaging studies. Non contrast CT scan is the most accurate imaging test for diagnosing kidney stones. It uses X rays to create detailed images of the urinary tract and can detect even small stones. Abdominal X rays can help to identify larger stones but may not detect smaller stones or stones composed of substances that are not radio opaque. Ultrasound is another imaging technique that we can use to create images of the kidneys and urinary tract. It is often used in situations where CT scanning is not preferred or when assessing pregnant individuals or children. Another imaging technique is the intravenous pyelogram. This is a dye-based imaging test that involves injecting a contrast agent into a vein. The contrast material helps to visualize the urinary tract and to identify any obstructions or abnormalities. IVP is less commonly used today, with CT scans being the preferred imaging modality. A urine sample may be collected to analyze the presence of blood, crystals, infection or other substances that may indicate kidney stones or related complications. Blood tests may be performed to evaluate kidney function, electrolyte levels and other parameters that can provide information about the overall health of the kidneys. If a stone is passed or removed, it can be analyzed in a laboratory to determine its composition. Stone analysis helps to guide treatment and prevention strategies. What are symptoms of kidney stones? Renal stones can cause a range of symptoms. The severity and nature of the symptoms can vary depending on the size, location and movement of the stone within the urinary tract. Patients often experience renal colic, which is a severe crampy pain that occurs in the back, side or lower abdomen. The pain can be intermittent and may radiate to the groin or genital area. Blood in the urine is a common symptom of kidney stones. It can vary in severity, ranging from microscopic amounts that are only detected through urine tests, to visible blood that gives the urine a pink, red or brown color. Kidney stones can cause changes in urination including increased frequency of urination, urgency to urinate, painful or burning sensation during urination, or incomplete emptying of the bladder. Some patients with kidney stones may experience nausea and vomiting, which can occur due to the severe pain or as a reflex response to the pain. The intense pain caused by kidney stones can lead to restlessness and discomfort. Affected individuals may have difficulty finding a comfortable position. Gentle pressure or palpation over the affected kidney area, so the flank region, may elicit a tenderness or pain. How can we treat kidney stones? The treatment of renal stones depends on various factors, including the size, location, composition of the stones, symptoms experienced by the patient, and the likelihood of spontaneous passage. Pain relief is often a primary concern in the treatment of renal stones. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, for short NSAIDs, are commonly used to manage pain associated with renal colic. In severe cases, stronger analgesics may be prescribed. If the stone is small, asymptomatic and has a high likelihood of spontaneous passage, the doctor may recommend increased fluid intake to promote natural stone expulsion. Regular monitoring and follow-up with imaging or urine analysis may be required to assess stone movement and patient symptoms. Medications may be prescribed to make stone passage easier. Alpha blockers such as tamsulosine can relax the muscles in the urinary tract, helping in the passage of stones. 
This therapy is more commonly used for stones less than 10 mm in size. Extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy involves the use of shockwaves to break up larger stones into smaller pieces that can pass more easily. This non-invasive procedure is often used for stones located in the kidney or upper ureter. Ureteroscopy involves the insertion of a thin tube called ureteroscope through the urethra and bladder to reach and remove or fragment stones in the ureter or kidney. Laser lithotripsy is commonly used during this procedure to break up the stones. Percutaneous nephrolithotomy is a surgical procedure performed under general anesthesia for the removal of larger stones. It involves making a small incision in the back and using specialized instruments to remove or break up the stones. After treatment, patients are often advised to make dietary and lifestyle changes to reduce the risk of recurrent kidney stones. This may involve increasing fluid intake, adopting a balanced diet low in sodium and oxalate, and managing underlying medical conditions contributing to stone formation. What are complications of kidney stones? Renal stones can cause urinary obstruction, leading to severe pain, hydronephrosis, so distension of the kidney, and potential kidney damage. Obstructed urine flow can increase the risk of urinary tract infections. Once a patient has had a kidney stone, he or she has an increased risk of developing additional stones in the future. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.